Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So there's been a lot of going on in terms of the long range of the weather. <clears throat> a lot of changes, a lot of drastic changes, a lot of uh, cool weather possibly to occur. <clears throat> Abnormally cool weather. And uh, yes, yeah, so very interesting. So I'll be doing an update on this today. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, please consider um, <clears throat> please consider doing so. It, it is really appreciated and uh, helps this channel out. So please do so, really uh, consider doing so. So uh, right now we're looking at the GFS model. This is the global forecasting system. We're looking at our six right now. <clears throat> and uh, you can see that there was actually a very, <clears throat> and a very active uh, period of weather for the past couple of days. <clears throat> There's been these derechos one after the other following up through the Midwest, reaching areas like South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Indiana. All those states and plenty more had plenty of rain. Uh, depends, you know, whether or not they got hit. I know for the past couple of weeks, like a week here, we've been getting a ton of rain, and that's, you know, it's not not concerning, it's not flooding, but it's just really good amounts of rain that um, are really required to replenish some of this water shortage. And you can see, <clears throat> sorry, you can see that there's possibly going to be a third one forming uh, through Nebraska and Missouri again on Thursday, Wednesday, late Wednesday, and into Thursday. And uh, notice how we see uh, a, a rather chilly, a uh, rather chilly lobe of air. You can see right there is going to be a high pressure, and we are looking. I don't know if you could see this, but from a meteorological standpoint, you could definitely tell here is cooler air. If we go to the two meter temperature anomaly, boom, there it is. And you can see that if we continue this forward in time, this is the newest model run. You can see that this starts already <laughs> late Wednesday. <clears throat> the changes and then Thursday it's chilly uh, again taking a long time to load I apologize and it's also the new model run so it's just loading but you can see uh, this is Friday now um, definitely uh, you know <clears throat> quite a bit of chilly air and it kind of maintain ma maintains itself for quite a while and <clears throat> you can see that uh, Illinois Iowa Missouri <clears throat> are in the chilly air and so is uh, Nebraska I mean most most of the Midwest and parts of the Northeast as well then uh, you can see it's kind of starts fading away we start seeing some warmer colors getting in like, through Minnesota Michigan and into even the Midwest uh, we see some of that cooler air still trying to you know make its way but then uh, you know without a uh, you know the cooler air gets pushed out completely but look we see another big wave this is on next Wednesday August 28th <clears throat> and look at that. Um, I mean, a, a very big. V I mean, this one could be even bigger. <clears throat> and you can see that. Uh, I mean, some of these anomalies are ridiculous. But look at that. That's that's very chilly. And this is what we were forecasting. We were forecasting these <clears throat> these drastic changes. These uh, these you know uh, these uh, these cooler temperatures. We uh, you know me and several other YouTubers. Uh, especially me or you know I was making these videos about uh, why August may be chilly and what that means for winter and you can see that this is I mean look how significant that is this is a huge anomaly this could possibly bring some first snow <clears throat> you know this is almost September 1st so I'm assuming some first snow for Montana North Dakota northern Minnesota um, definitely uh, some first snowfalls occurring for those areas <clears throat> if you were to go to the old mile run and show you what the other one was showing you can see still that same very chilly cold air and I mean it, it's gonna continue so <clears throat> this one in case you're wondering seems to be reaching out into the south uh, fairly you know fairly powerfully still maybe not the southeast but areas like Texas Louisiana Arkansas Oklahoma <clears throat> the south central states are gonna get cooled off so the cooler air is on the way in and look we possibly <laughs> see another blast of chilly air in the long range and then another one so I mean it's just gonna be one after the other and this could mean you know I, I mean <laughs> this could mean a, a great thing or you know like a significant text, uh, a signal that, uh, that the winter um, to come has some correlations with how the weather pattern already sets up in fall so <clears throat> this could be you know very 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 uh, important and we'll have to monitor this but right now you can see our 240 this is the European model so ECMWF 500 millibar geopotential height that basically tells us where the troughs and the ridges are in the jet stream and where whenever there's a trough <clears throat> let me explain this quickly I've done this many times before but like here there's a trough and <clears throat> that is marked by the blue colors usually then <clears throat> 
cold temperatures store up in this location and brings chilly conditions <clears throat> whereas during a ridge a ridging pattern <clears throat> it's usually something like this and that uh, brings in warm air but you can see that as of now the European model is also showing <clears throat> some signs of a you know significant <clears throat> troughing going on which you could see uh, would be uh, also green with the GFS and this is so four hour zero we get that first one through Thursday we get a little bit of warm up you can see possibly some warmer temperatures or closer to average but then we see another cool off and yet another cool off so GFS very similar to this and uh, <clears throat> you know I'm not trying to just focus on the fall I'm just focusing on what's to come. Some people were saying, you know, like, focus on <clears throat> on what's to come. Well, I am right here, and you can see chilly temperatures are on the way. Um, August has not been warm by any means in most locations. Even though you may be sweltering in the 90s and the 100s, it hasn't been above average in your area, most likely, as much as you think it is. And I know that because I can look at the average map, and I have these statistics from NOAA that show me that. So, you know, your your, your claims aren't fooling anyone. But you can see that <clears throat> uh, here across hour 0, hour 12, again, that first cool-off, this is now the GEFS ensembles. <clears throat> and this is, I think, 30, 24, or something like that, models of the GFS family. And you can see that, again, very similar. We first trough, then we see a break, maybe possibly of a little bit of ridging. You can see, again, it's more like an upside-down smiley face, kind of like a mustache. <laughs> yeah, and, <clears throat> and then we go into time, and you can see it shows also cooler air. <clears throat> and then possibly towards the end, um, you know, maybe more of a zonal flow interesting to see but look at that I mean the, the t temperature anomalies are gonna be significantly colder or lower than what we previously thought so very chilly air very active let's go to uh, the GFS but let me show you the MSLP and precip uh, to show you to demonstrate you you know what the precipitation is gonna be doing uh, basically along these uh, Here's going to be the pattern. So every time we get one of those big uh, cool downs, we'll see a right, cold front associated with that, which could <clears throat> instigate some, you know, thunderstorms. But then also while there's the break between them, we see some thunderstorms <clears throat> firing up in the warm atmosphere. Right, like here, right there, you can see t Monday, Tuesday, we see some big uh, storm complexes to the north by the Gulf States. <clears throat> and uh, this could, uh, you know, produce some active weather. But then look, you see that high pressure or that low pressure uh, with uh, plenty of chilly air and this kind of drags a cold front down to the south and out ahead of it you could see some fairly sig significant <clears throat> active weather and then similar you know the same thing one after the other one after the other <clears throat> and let's not forget about uh, <clears throat> the tropics we could be looking also at some tropical disturbances not even you know it doesn't have to be a necessarily a tropical depression or a storm or <clears throat> Or a hurricane. I mean, it could literally just be, um, you know, it could literally just be a, uh, a moisture from the tropical storm. It could just influence that like, humidity from a tropical storm. And that's enough to uh, to put the uh, many locations, you know, at higher risk of some active severe weather. So overall, very active period. Let me show you the six to ten day outlook. I want to show you this because <clears throat> many people go by the CPC and say they're way better <clears throat> and you, I mean you can see they're showing ve very similar thing way below average for this part of the country uh, excluding the west and the east so that's kind of I should probably you know include that that it's gonna be below average for the west but look at that above average uh, precip which means you know very active fall like weather is on its way so seasons are changing guys whether you like it or not unfortunately that's what's happening and you can see uh, 8 to 14 day outlook <clears throat> also very chilly uh, they have actually very high confidence 70 percent and then uh, the above average pattern continues so we're looking at a very interesting fun pattern <clears throat> let me see if they updated their uh, their three to four week outlook which they uh, often do uh, uh, not often, I, I want to say n not too often, but okay, so they updated it uh, 16th of July, and you can see uh, they're also showing uh, below average conditions, and uh, you know, that would, that, that lines up with what the 8 to 6, 8 to 14 day outlook and 6 to 10 day outlook are showing, so uh, this could, um, you know, this is definitely uh, something that is, you know, supported by many, many sources. So that's basically it guys, I just wanted to wrap this up, I showed you most of the models are important, the GFS, European, the GFS ensembles, I showed you this with the client prediction center things, and 
<clears throat> in terms of the tropics, right, it could get a little bit more active now. And we're you know reaching to around the peak of the season, here, but uh, I, I won't be updating there, you guys, unless there's like an actual storm, because that's what people like the best uh, when there's an actual system and there's something more concrete. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.